take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Watch how you eat and because that makes a difference. Watch what you listen to because it makes a difference. Yep. Watch the people that you're around because it makes a difference. And yeah, girl, it's been, it been a journey. What about therapy? Did you ever? Oh, it took me years to do that. But I'm when I tell you that's a game changer, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for that. Me too. Like, people are like, I oh, therapy. I need it. I need it. Sign me up. I will not survive this life if I didn't have it. Sign me up. You're in the right place. It's Unpack That with me and Bell. Countdown coming in live in five, four. What's up, y'all? We're here. Unpack that with Mia Bell, my special guest today, Ebony Riley from the D. What up, what up, what up, y'all? Detroit. Yes. Girl, first, let me start off with a story because I was telling my homegirl, like, yeah, I'm going to have Ebony Riley on this show. <laughs> and she was like, girl, you didn't make it to the listening party because that. Oh, she was there. She was there. Oh, and yeah. she said everybody who is somebody was there and that you have the craziest support from all of the biggest artists that we love and she just said man it was a movie and I couldn't wait to talk to you even more so after that because you know the talent is speaking for itself thank you yeah, yeah it was a time I ain't gonna lie <laughs> this the shit out can I cuss on you yeah you can say my right. so the shit I went through going to it mm -hmm. you wouldn't have thought because it turned out amazing, but leading up to, I was like, "Child, the devil is trying to play with me." But it was, it was the most perfect night I could have dreamt of. Like, yeah. I, I never imagined it to be like that. I just, yeah, it was when you got there, did you kind of get rid of whatever was happening? Because I feel like once we do that, is when God is like, "Look at this magic, baby." <laughs> well, I had to do that before I got downstairs because it was already like it was from my hair getting messed up before. Well, I know exactly how you. To my, to my fit like I had no time to like figure out what I was wearing on top of it like because I was so busy with press so I didn't even like I grabbed that little the outfit I had last minute in between shit so it was like I didn't try it on got there and I'm like oh my god but it's fine like you can't see my ass well then these things right. go, you know like little, little petty <laughs> stuff but still that stuff that matters in like yo 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 energy and how you you walk into a room yeah but then I was just like you know what fuck it it's too late all these people here to support you. I took a shot, maybe two. Mm -hmm. It was like, girl, go turn this shit out. A what? Which it was tequila? It was tequila, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was tequila. I was tequila girl. Mm -hmm. Me too. Right now, but I, I think I'm going to have to switch your own. You got sick off of it? No, nah, not sick, but just like the way my body be. I'm getting older, so mm -hmm. it's like, I don't got time to be down for two, three days. Yeah, like, no, I feel that. Yeah. One night can turn into like six months. It's like recovery. Yeah. For real, it's like, I don't know, I ain't signed up for this. Mm -hmm. That's his way of saying, well, water. But like, you know, it's talking about it before. Like, every time it gets <laughs> given, where, I, I need a glass of water. Okay, yeah. at this point, baby, he no. down. I completely get it. Now, the project, everybody showed out for this EP. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about, you know, the beginning process of everything, and then we'll get into Ebony before the music. So in the beginning process, how long have you been working on this project? We was working on it for like four years. Really? Mm -hmm. 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you might have to take me, we're going to have to go to the beginning and lead up to that first. Mm -hmm. Ebony, you're from Detroit. What was it like growing up in your neighborhood? Uh, what was it like? Uh, All I know is BMF Detroit. I love Do that. you watch? <laughs> I am. I don't I okay. want to know the story. And I was living in that area for a little time like that was the area where i was um put in foster care actually really mm -hmm. wow. yeah, it's like all around the same equals river rouge like down river area mm -hmm. but yeah so i'm watching because i'm like i want to know what tea is I'm like, what's going on right up under my nose i'm a i'm a kid i don't know what's going on yeah well yeah so what was it like growing up over there what was your childhood like uh I mean, it wasn't easy, but, like, I, I always got to get this disclaimer before I talk about it because, like, I don't want it to come off as sympathy. Like, right. I, you know, like, I'm empowering myself even when I talk about stuff because before I was ashamed of it where now I'm like, look at me. Look at where you are. Like, I'm pr I'm actually finally proud of myself where I, I didn't give myself credit for years yeah. where it was like I was still being hard on myself. Like, you got to do better. You got to do more. And it's like, no, you made it to this space where you are in that circumstance. Don't worry. Give yourself credit. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it wasn't the easiest. But <laughs> well, you know how Detroit, you know, you know how um, foster care at a young age. Uh, how old were you? Um, seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And then after that, it was like, I was, we were, I was blessed because they didn't separate me from my sister. So, oh, wow. How many siblings do you have? Four of us. I'm the baby. My sister, I got two brothers, my sister, Demi. And have you guys always been tight? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, me being the, the anchor, like, because I'm the baby, so I'm the favorite. So I'm always like, Damn, I'm the baby too. Yeah. yeah. They don't play about it. They don't play about me. Yeah. I be in good graces with all of them. I don't be in the middle of nobody's shit. It'd be like, yeah, so I I always been close with them. They my best friends. Yeah, I get on my nerves too. I get on theirs, I'm sure, but they my best friends. You're the glue, and mm-hmm. they were your glue when you guys were going through that. Mm-hmm. And then what about life after foster care? Were you mm-hmm. until you were what 16, 18? No, no, no. We I, I was blessed because I um they put us with family members after like the first year and a half. Okay, and um so it was like different family members or whatever, and then. Um, when I got to like my teenage years, I was with my yeah, with my grandma and then I moved with my brother mm-hmm. to finish high school. And then, you know, how that go, you know, I'm a teenager. I was kinda trying to rebel. Uh-huh. Then he you know, he kicked me out. Yeah. He say he didn't kick me out, nigga. You kick me out. Right. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, it's all, it's all right. right. That's my when I say that's my best friend, I love him now. Mm-hmm. But um, sometimes we need that. No, yeah. yeah, dude, like if he if he wasn't on me the way he was, like I ain't no telling how I could have been. How right. I been. like he was strict on me. Like I could have been wild. Yeah. But like he ain't, he had me on the choco. Like don't leave the porch before I get home from work. Like, and I'm 16, can't sit sitting on the porch. Like, hey, waving <laughs> at my friends. It's like, ah, uh-uh, ghetto. I don't know. Free. Right. But um, yeah, I was with him um until about 16, 17. And then I was on my own from then. I was on my own, I think from like, yeah, like 17, I was on my own. Wow. Um, yeah. When did you get bit by the music bug, though? Like, when did you realize that that was a passion of yours? Mm, that was that was young. I was like, I want to say maybe like between five to seven. Mm-hmm. And it was when I noticed that it was that I liked to sing. Maybe like seven years old was when I knew I could sing. But music was always when my mama played the thing. Mm-hmm. So what was she listening to? She was listening to Mary J. Blige. Come on. I always say Mary first because that's the one that stuck the most. Mm-hmm. What record do you remember? I'm going down. Yeah. I got a video <laughs> with me. I did a full music video when I was little. Yeah. It's a girl. So like, I let me let me say this disclaimer. I invented those this money did. Really? Yeah. I was money. doing it in that and I was like, I need my credit. I need Bobby. Look, my, you I said you got it on video. Like, baby. Back back in the day, you heard that? You're <laughs> but no, oh man. but yeah. Oh, Mary, what else? Mary, Erica Badu, um, Tony Braxton, yeah. and Barry White. Um, and then when I started choosing my own music, it was like Brandy. Um, you know, I met uh, Monica. I love Monica. Jasmine Sullivan. Um, all of the R&B, the great on that, yeah. And each one of them for different things, though. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Tony's tone was different. Brad, do you think I am? Like, <laughs> like well, you can't, I can't stand you. <laughs> hey, I'm not a singer. Yeah. Go on. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Who do you think I am? Hey. <laughs> but, uh, who else? And then who else? I was obsessed. I love Rihanna. Yeah. Just because her, her freedom to just do whatever the fuck she wanted to do. Um, who else? You know, it's crazy that you say all of those people because I feel like you give a little bit of that. Like, mm-hmm. as I was listening to your EP, I was getting surprised with the content you were hitting us with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Open. Mm-hmm. And then we go down the same. Me. Right. And I'm like, right. this. Right, like, damn. The rain. Like, that went left. Right. Like, <laughs> so you pulling in from that Rihanna, and you pulling in from that Tony and from the Monica. So I feel all of that. So you listing all those names, that's spot on. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, even you saying it now, it make me actually recognize it. Because before I was like, I don't feel like I pulled from none of them. But now when I think about it, the emotion. Yeah, yeah. Not so much of how I sound, but yeah, like the emotion and just like the range of emotion mm-hmm. that you're giving throughout the project too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it was. It, it, I grew up in a great time. I feel like yeah, with music, it was. I'm I'm blessed to grow up in the '90s because yeah. like it was just different, you know. People was just real create, like not no shade, you know. And being the baby in the family too, because mm-hmm. having elders that also it like different. yeah, it extends your musical it palette. That is the only reason why I know Luther exactly. I know Badu. I would have never known of them, right? Like, I would have known obviously, but it wouldn't have been no. It wouldn't have been personal. Yeah, like how these kids now they don't respect and understand Brandy. It's like stop. 
playing with her. Right. Like, and Brandy's range, her vocal range. Brandy, please stop playing with Brandy. Stop playing with her. <laughs> I'd be like, y'all really are ungrateful. Right. And I want to fight. And she's so humble. Yeah, she is. She is. And I I think it's also what plays in it is this generation, the social media. She ain't got time for that. Right. She put her she work on. Yeah, she put her work in. So it's like, all right, y'all know it's okay. Yeah. Y'all yeah. can stay over there by my um, phone screen. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm blessed to grow up in that time because baby. Yeah. Yeah. It shaped you. Mm-hmm. So at seven, that's when you knew you could really sing. Mm-hmm. And when was it a situation as to where you're like, I'm going to take this seriously? It took me years because even like when I was seven, I knew. But then I, when I was nine, that was when like my family was getting me to sing. Like my grandma was uh, making me get in the choir. And then like I was always singing at the church uh, plays and all the little things. And then I just, I never took it serious then, like back then, because I didn't have a confidence. Like I was just really like. I was I was insecure. Like I was super tiny, dark skin. Like you know they don't they didn't champion us back then. Like yeah, I was starting to become more of a thing. Not even just them champion us, us champion ourselves. Yeah, where that wasn't a thing back in the day. So I just think yeah, I let so many insecurities mute me and kind of put this fear of like oh I'm gonna just let some I use my voice if anything. Like I like I saw some little movie and I was like oh I'll be the one doing that where I'm standing backstage and they lip singing to my voice and it's like, bitch, what? Right. I'm like, why well, the star? Yeah, but yeah. it took for me to go through like the modeling and all of that to break that. So I'm like, I know that God put me in that industry for a reason. Yeah. Not because that was my path, but because I had other shit that I had to break down. Right. Yeah. So when did you start modeling? So I moved from Detroit when I was 21. I was supposed to go for America's Next Time Model. Oh, what season? Like, was this around? I don't remember. I didn't go. I wasn't on it. Really? So, yeah, I didn't actually make it. But was this around the time when they were doing it, like, differently, where it was, like, on social media? Like, I remember. No, this is 2011. Okay. So, and it was still, like, this in the early, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, um... I remember going and I, cause I was so, I was more timid then cause I wasn't, it took more time for me to show my personality. Like okay. school, I was silly. Everybody knew I was goofy and I was funny, but that's because that was my comfort zone. Like that was my school. I knew everybody where it's like, if I don't know you, you're not going to see that right out the gate. Right. And so I went, you know, I didn't, I wasn't given what they wanted at the time. You know, social media was not it was just kind of starting so like they wanted big personalities on that stuff right but um yeah thank god i did i didn't do it or well, they didn't pick me mm-hmm. and instantly i knew i was like because my cousin was like whatever happens we got you like you know if you got to come back you can stay with us till you get on your feet so instantly that little light bulb went off before i even went to the, the interview that's something like power to mind is something because i went into it already knowing that i wasn't gonna get it Right. And what I had to do to get back to California to pursue my dreams. So didn't get it. Went back home to Detroit. I always say stack my money. I ain't stack shit. Mm-hmm. Because I came back with $176. And it's like, now looking back, it's like, girl, you was trying it. How the fuck did you move from Detroit to yeah. California? Wait, but, you know, I figured some things. I was getting my unemployment check. Shout out to the system. Come on. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> because, you are. baby, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I moved back after... Um, Baby, in the end. <laughs> so, you, yeah, you came back to stack? Yeah, I came back. Didn't stack? Didn't stack, baby. What were you doing? I'm, I mean, just, I had my job, and I still have my Where was you working at? Hey, at that time, this inventory company called RGIS. Okay. So I'm, like, going into uh, Home Depot, scanning every little thing, every nail, every, really? everything. And I still love that job, actually, weirdly, because I'm competitive. So the more you count it, the more money you've made. So mm-hmm. Right, I'm waiting on all of that day. It feels like I'm getting my raise. Right, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I was there at that job, and then I took my little money, went back, knowing that I didn't get back it. to California. Back to California, but that's the power to mind. Back then, I was lying, mm-hmm. but <laughs> now I'm like, no, bitch, it was manifesting. Yeah, I was telling them like, yeah, I'm going back for next next time. My old, it's the contract, and it's like, bitch, you ain't getting it. You know, you didn't get it. They didn't know that. Right. And went back. They don't have to know that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to figure it out with the agency. Like, I was like, I had this whole, because I was almost embarrassed to let people know. And I didn't want nobody to project their shit on me. Where it's like, why are you doing that? Or da 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 I didn't want that. So I had to almost put that facade on just to figure it out. And and it worked. I went, 
No, nah, it didn't work right away, though, because I went, I was working my normal job. Mm-hmm. So I was at Claire's first, scared as hell in there, piercing these e- baby's ears. Oh, my God. They like, they like you. Re-. I'm like, you ready? They like, bitch, is you ready? <laughs> <laughs> you like, like shaking my like, head. It's terrifying. Cause they don't train you with right. this stuff. Like, just so y'all know, that's crazy. They don't train y'all. At Claire's? They don't train. They gave me a piece of paper, and I draw a dot, and I punch the hole. With no. all. Baby, <laughs> so imagine how scared I was with a real crying ass moving baby. It's right. Like, uh-uh, this is ghetto. I can't get out of here. <laughs> like, looking at you like you an expert. No, they could tell I was scared because oh, I was in that bitch. Y'all ready? <laughs> All right. They, like, which, uh-uh. Like, nah, get somebody else to do it. I mean, it worked, though. I ain't get nobody no crooked ear piercings. Okay. okay. It out. But yeah, then I was, I was working at Claire's, Radio Shack, and then Radio Sprint. Radio Shack? Mm-hmm. Damn, Ooh. I forgot about Radio right? Shack. Right, I think I was at the last era before they ended. Yeah, do you remember Blockbuster? I do, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. What about Sam Goody? I do, but I can't, I remember the name. Sam Goody sold the CDs. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Radio yeah, Shack. Sam Goody, <laughs> damn. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so Radio <laughs> Shack, and then I got hired at Sprint, and then I ended up losing my job at Sprint when I signed my modeling contract. Mm-hmm. Who did you sign with? With LA Models. And how did you get scouted? You were walking? So originally I went, I took the bus because I was staying in Buena Park, mm-hmm. which is as far from West Hollywood. So I took like a three and a half, four hour bus ride. Probably was more than that just because I didn't know where I was going. Mm-hmm. Um, took the bus to West Hollywood trying to get signed. Remind you, I ain't know how to do no makeup. My eyebrows, I was doing these thick ass eyebrows with black pencil. Mm-hmm. Like didn't know how to really do my hair. I was doing the tight ass curls in my weave. Mm-hmm. Like, you remember them little shiny glitter heels? Yeah. Them cheap ass, girl, I had them little cheap ass heels. I walked up there, bitch wobbling, don't know how to walk in the yeah. And they looked at me and was like, the one girl saw it, but when she took me to the back, when she took the pictures to the back, they didn't see it. Because mm-hmm. the, the photos was actually like really bad quality the way I printed them. So I got rejected and I was like, damn, all right, whatever. It's cool. Went, figured it out. I spoke to a photographer that had shot my stuff and he was like, oh, he taught me how to do my makeup, taught me how to like get dressed and like he styled me, took me to Asian and we was keeping them tags on us, shit, taking it back. But we figured it out, went in there and I ended up signing the same agency. They didn't realize I was the same girl. Wow. They didn't realize I was the same girl, yeah. I'm sure you probably simplified it so they could see more of you. And just, I was more, I wasn't sweating from taking a four hour bus ride. Right. In these, you know what I mean? Like, I was, it was, it was looking crazy. Right. I ain't gonna lie. It was, it, it, was, looking, it was looking a little rough. Mm. But, um, yeah, so I signed with them, but it still wasn't translating because, like, I signed and they wasn't, they wasn't rocking with me like that. Not, not because, um, I wasn't it. It was more, that wasn't my market. Right. So every client I go into and they like, you are so beautiful, but why you not in New York? And I'm just like, I just got fired from Sprint and I was a top sales associate at the time. Um, I was getting my bonus things and now y'all, yeah, I'm, oh. I'm competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so you, you killed every job. Yeah, yeah, I'm very like, because yeah, I want to keep my job and I want to get, we get a raise, we get a raise, we get bonuses. Right, right. Oh, baby, we right. got y'all. I got to <laughs> sell this phone that I don't know nothing about. Let me tell you about this young man. Like I was in there. Maybe you don't saw me. If you saw me, you'd be like, this girl is a tech uh, head. I knew nothing about, I would read that shit right quick before they came in. Right. If, yeah, figured it That's out. That's fine. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah. Um, so they're saying, you should go to New York. And, and you're like, clicked. yeah, something clicked. And I was just like, okay, they saying this for a reason. So I was like, okay, how am I going to get to New York? And everything just kind of like start falling in line. So I met my friend, um, he a hairstylist, Haas Humperton. Shout out to him. I love him. Mm-hmm. He opened up his space to me where I didn't know him, but he, uh, for some reason, God sent him to me. He went to my best friends now. Wow. Where he first offered, he was like, oh, darling, you know, like, let's do a shoot together. Da, 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 da. And I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then he was like, you can come if you need to come to New York, stay at my place. And I was like, all right. Like, I don't know if you're like that. Right. All right, but like, you know, I'm still not used to people saying stuff and actually meaning it. So in my head, I'm just like, he can't, whatever. And people being good people. I'm just not used, I wasn't yeah. used to it at that point. Mm-hmm. So um, what happened? So he ended up saying that. So it was in my head. And then after that, I just kind of was like low-key manifesting, not knowing, like I said, my, my going to New York. I booked the job. Finally, after six months of me being signed, I finally booked the job. And I was like, I'm like, God, I'm rich. Mm-hmm. It was not that much money. What job oh, was it? It was OPI Nail Company. Oh, wow. Oh, OPI. I and mean, that was like, but that was a thing that, remember? Yeah. OPI was hot before Etsy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Etsy. Mm-hmm. 
Essie, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like OBI was hot before them, mm-hmm. and then Essie came and kind of took over. OBI is the original girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then, for me, I'm like, oh my god, it's not OBI. Like my life is I'm like, I'm rich, I'm all the way. Yeah, I'm like, I'm so quick and different. Like it was like, oh, I'm like, I'm about to get the nice weave this time. Like we ain't getting this cheap shit. I got it last week. And I'm like, it right. was beauty supplies for hair. What is that? I got my new contacts because I used to wear contacts back then. Mm-hmm. What color? Girl, brown. Really? Brown. It was a mess. Mm-hmm. It was a mess. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's what she's doing. Yeah. So, a lot of the times. But yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, OPI was your first mm-hmm. modeling gig. So, I took that money. I told my agency. I lied to them and was like, look, I already booked the flight, so I want y'all to support me if y'all can. If y'all can't, I'm still going regardless. Just trying to, like, kind of call their bluff and try to make them support. And then they was like, okay, like, if you already bought it, we got you. They set me up. I went to New York, went to all the agencies, got rejected by 90% of them. Mm-hmm. And then this one, I met with two of them. This one still rejected me, but he gave me advice and it changed everything. Where he told me to take the contact out. He was like, you got contacts in your eyes? And I was like, I was trying not to look at him because I didn't want him to clock me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, he's like, please go take him out right now. Went and took him out. And I was like, damn, I could feel my pupils. I hadn't taken, I hadn't taken him out in so many years because it was like, a, it, it was the first time people told me I was beautiful. So I was like, so it was like a, a clutch almost, where it's like I literally could not walk out the house without my contacts in. Really? I did not take them out because I didn't have the money to get like new ones, the solution, all this stuff. So I would literally be sleeping in them, got a tear in it. I twist it up so the tear ain't under the lid type. Like, no way. Nuts. nuts. But he changed my life, him making me take those out because he made me see my, my true beauty. And it was just like, damn, all right. When they rejected me still. I went to... Went to the next agency and then was he black? He was a black man. Yeah, he told me to cut my weed because the 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 prototype that we seen the person that I always saw was Naomi Campbell, right? So she has these color contacts in. She got this long ass weave down her back, down her ass. So it's like that's what I saw growing up. So it's like that's what I need to give. Yeah. Until this man was like, "You need to cut your weave down shorter, take them contacts out, and just yeah, don't do that. It's cheap." And I was like, I thought I was looking good, mm-hmm. but then it's like it took off that insecurity instantly yeah where it was like damn like this for me is the look the hair pulled back yeah girl you are all face okay trying to give a little face look. all face thank you anyway thank you mm-hmm. so yeah um what happened after that so this guy he changes your life with this advice. yeah yeah end up going to another agency and then sign with them and then it just kind of like i end up booking Givenchy campaign like my my first week i think what and then what and then it just, it kind of just took off. Catapulted yeah. from there. Yeah. Like it was, I never left. I was supposed to just go and try to hope to get signed. I was, I literally went praying to get signed. Mm-hmm. Never knowing what the outcome was going to be. And then, yeah. Givenchy. Givenchy. I was saying Givenchy. I was like, oh my God, bro. I just booked Givenchy. <laughs> and then I showed up to say, they like, I'm done. Anymore. Givenchy. Right. I was like, oh, yeah. I know. I didn't okay. know. Yeah. Oh, wow. So when does music come into play during your modeling career? Um, it took me years to, because as it went up, I also, everything went down again because it was one of them things, this, it always go back to the power of the mind mm-hmm. where I listen, to, that's, this is my biggest thing. I always tell people, don't listen to nobody else. Yeah. And somebody else said something, a friend that didn't, they meant no harm. I think they just projected their insecurities on me, not knowing but that's not they for I allowed it to manifest and like I planted the seed and I watered it. Like right. they planted the seed and I watered it. Yeah. And they was like, Oh, what if you can't afford your rent or not? What if you can what? Afford your rent. And I was like, Yeah, I'm like, bitch, I'm good right now. But in my head, I'm like, fuck. And I started manifesting that. I started stressing about like, damn, what if I don't get booked tomorrow? What if I don't do this? What if I don't and it just start it's just a snowball. I go to from there, then it's just like, you know, where I wasn't putting my energy out. I was just in this kind of depressive mood because I just... A worry mood. That on top of me already not feeling like I belonged in this space because I couldn't be myself. I was already scared about being Ebony, you know, because yeah. they changed my name to Riley. So it was just like... They changed your name to Riley? My last name is Riley. Yeah. But they took the Ebony off. I was like, oh, we're just going to name you Riley. Riley. So we don't want you another black girl. Be the, be another black girl from Detroit named Ebony. Really? The agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I left them, though. Thank God. They had to go. 
Yeah. yeah. So I was already battling with that side of me being scared to be myself in this industry because I want the opportunities. I want to make it. I don't want to have to go back to the hood. I'm like, right. you know what I mean? I'm trying to figure it out. And then that is that thing with it. Like something you, you manifesting some like turmoil and you like, yo, your downfall is, is clip if you don't recognize it. And I didn't recognize it right away. That's an important gem right there. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize when that worriness and, and negative, like, you know, idea of what could possibly happen. Like, once that starts to fester, oh, it's a wrap. It don't do nothing for you, right? I don't got time to think negative over myself no more. Right. I watch me manifest the good and the bad now. Right. Now, that's when I'm like, I know the power that we got. Like, we all got it. It's just people don't, some tap in, some don't. Yeah. So I'm just like, you watch you get stuff and you watch you lose stuff from yourself, not nobody else. Because at first I was trying to blame the modeling industry. Like, oh, da, da, da. And it's like, you can't blame them. Right. Like, you weren't putting your energy out there. You weren't doing the things because, not because you couldn't, because I didn't want to. And I also was just, like, in that space of, like, depression and not knowing. Right. And then, yeah, it took me to recognize it. And it was like, girl, get get it together. Yeah. Get it together. And then, yeah, I think I just eventually was like yeah what you doing like you know you've been artist. singing throughout this whole time too like singing as far as like writing your stuff and just in your own zone but just not publicly doing it not publicly but still i was still popping out little videos on my uh, since i had instagram i was always posting videos of me mm -hmm. singing okay so people always knew that it was something that i love it was just like i wasn't doing like the full things like right. how you know it wasn't the full market plan it was right. like little i barely i wasn't even showing my eye y'all y'all might get like this part of my face might get this part of my face the next video but i, I always dropped little gems over the years but you were in the studio and doing all that's a 2015 okay and that was when because i think i changed agencies and then um the president there he was just like you need to be singing like you got a voice like show this personality that you're showing me like people gonna love this so um yeah i started then but it still wasn't translating because it wasn't it wasn't me it was like what these people thought of me because they saw me as a model yeah so i just kind of like i ain't really dive into it it was more of just kind of like not disappointment but just like it wasn't the the I, did, I, I wasn't reassured by the music when I heard it, so I didn't push it too much. It right. Kinda, like, I just kept going with the flow of how life was. So I was more focused on my mental health, getting jobs, working, you know what I mean? Like, because like I said, I was in that space that I didn't realize I was in until I realized. And it's like, okay, you got to meditate. You need right. to work out. You need to do breathing exercises. There was so many other things that I, I was, like, incorporating to get myself out of that space. Right. And then everything else just started falling in line after that. Like, I... That's when I like met Tata and it just everything just literally after that just was like thing after you. How far did things go in order for you to realize that? Or how bad did things get? Or how, you know, low to the ground were you at that moment where you're like, the only way is up at this point? It was bad. It was like I was sleeping like I say like twenty, twenty hours out the day. Wow. And it's depression. It's depression. Yeah. But you don't know it until somebody speaks about it. So that's why now I can speak about it because if I ever get in the mold, I'm I'm acknowledging it right away. Yeah. Where it's just like, no, nah, we don't have time for that. Do what you need to do to feed your soul, feed your mind, to, you know, do whatever it is to figure it out. Whereas then I didn't know. Like somebody mentioned it to me, was like, make sure you have things to do on the side outside of modeling because you will get depressed. And I was like, depressed, like fuck my life. Right. I come from Detroit, like that ain't what are you talking about. No, saying we all think like, that. yeah, where it's like, no, you don't know shit. <laughs> you don't know shit. And it was like for me to sit there and I'm like, why are you still sleeping? What are you, you not putting your energy out there? You not doing anything for yourself? And once I recognize that, I put my playlist on, get out my mood. Hey, you shooting such and such on this day? You know what I mean? So it's just like once I start actually recognizing the pattern and the way it work, it was just like a conscious effort every day of like, yeah, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Watch how you eating because that makes a difference. Watch what you listen to because it makes a difference. Yep. Watch the people that you're around because it makes a difference. And yeah, girl, it's been, it been a journey. What about therapy? Did you ever? Oh, it took me years to do that. But I'm when I tell you that's a game changer, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for that. Me too. Like people are like, I need oh, therapy. I need it. I need it. Sign me up. I will not survive this life if I didn't have it. Sign me up. <laughs> 
sign me. I don't think Seriously. people, it's, it's such a, it sucks because it's such a taboo where it's just like people think it's like it make you crazy where it's like, I'm not crazy. Yeah. I'm human and I have emotions that I don't know how to process on my own because I'm not, I don't know everything. You know what I mean? Like I'm very self-aware, I will say that, but self-awareness doesn't matter if you don't take the actions to like actually correct it. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I was always aware of my stuff, but I was still doing the same thing. Right. So it was just like, okay, why are you doing that? What do you have to do to break it? Therapy, baby. When did you start? 2000, 2018. Uh-huh. I lost like two people real, real close to me. And um, I mentioned him and saved me. Yeah. And then you know, I wanted to talk to you about that too. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned losing a baby as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, girl. It's I go on to that. Yeah. No, I completely understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um. Yeah. So that losing, you know, close loved ones. That's what drove you to therapy mm-hmm. in 2018. And just wanting to heal and just like, yeah, it was like, I I wanted that that for myself, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Where it's like, how can you ask for these things and ask God to give you these things if you're not putting the work to receive them? Right. You know, it's like, you can be given all of this stuff and then you're not ready for it, then what? Yeah. So it was just like me getting to a place where I'm just like, I was just tired of being in that space. And I also had help. I had other people encouraging me. I had my mentor, shout out to my mentors, mm-hmm. who was just like, you going to a therapist and I was like, damn, all right. But yeah. all right. Cause you know, I wanted you were ready. Yeah. So um yeah, it really just took me getting caught in that rock bottom of like, like I said, not doing nothing with myself. Yeah. I'm literally like yeah. And tired of being for me, when I leaned into therapy, I was tired of what I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And when there's no way to nowhere to look anymore, it's like, okay, we need to get mm-hmm. the help. So you are open to it. Game changer, like you said. And is that when you met Ty Ty after? No, I met him before. He was one of the people that encouraged me to. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when Mike Man is a superhero. Yeah. I hate when I say it, but it's like... He saw it in you. He he saw something, and, like, by the grace of God, like, was like... Yeah. Yeah. On you about it. All of them. Like, that's what I'm telling you. Like, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm blessed to have all of them as, like... Fam, like be able to call them family because they they've been through it right so when did it turn into that so like when did you link with Ty Ty the whole Rock mm-hmm. Nation family and just get to working on the project 2018 that's okay. what I'm telling you as soon as I like everything was just like clockwork once I start like I recognize it because I was already doing the work on my own a little bit but and did you get a call like lay the land for me what no nah, it was actually that's why I'm like Design timing and God, cause like even like me meeting like I I met him through Jay Brown, mm-hmm. and it was just like if I had known the mastermind that Jay Brown is, I probably would have been more shy. I probably wouldn't have been more like, cause I you know you see how I am like I be talking shit. I'm yeah, saying. and thank God I didn't because that allowed me to be open and for him to see who you really are. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah, which led to the introduction and then like. Originally, it was supposed to be acting. Mm-hmm. Like, which I still is. that for you, too. Yeah, which yeah. it still is. Big but, time. But the music is, like, the right. core first. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm like, we got to get this rolling first. But, um, yeah, so it started with the acting stuff. And then, yeah, mm-hmm. I s- 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 did the Let Me Slash You My Mixtape shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, after, like, almost two years, though. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, he was like, damn, like, because he didn't know. Right. Then I sang, I never was like hitting notes around and were like, he just, I just played him like my first track that I recorded and was like, you think I should finish this song? The producer said I should finish it, which the producer was not thinking about that song. And then I said, Station, okay, here it goes again. <laughs> Girl, baby, I'm gonna start doing that more often. Uh, baby, sometimes you gotta figure it out. Right. You gotta figure what it out. Think about this, you know, my uh, my investors. <laughs> My investors are on no, no, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I gotta no, stop. you don't. I'm about to use that. Baby, I'm <laughs> telling you. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, so. And then from there, I think he just, from him seeing that, he wanted to kind of just test it out. Right. And then we was working on a couple songs. And that's when I think he was like, oh, shit, okay, she actually really got something. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, we ended up doing the album in 2019 COVID happened yeah but well, we started in 2019 COVID happened and then we finished it in 2020 yeah like that summer of 2020 yeah that's a big deal 
you've come a very, very long way. And everything that you had to endure was all not even just for this, because it's going to go so far. We can't even see where it's at. And that's another blessing, too. When you don't know where it's going, you just know it's going to be so big. That's like the biggest blessing. What does your family say about everything? You know, your siblings, they love you down. They just happy for me. They excited to like see me going into this space. And they, I think they even see it. Whereas like with the model and they were happy for me and they were supportive. But right. this, they like, oh shit. Cause they remember the little girl that was always singing and dancing and doing the routines at the family reunions and all of that shit. So it's like, you really doing it. Like it's all coming to life. Yeah. And I think they, they also inspire too, which I feel like that's the most important for me. Cause it's like, I want them to see, I'm not the golden child. I'm not like the chosen one. I chose this for myself, though, from the circumstances, you know what I'm yep. saying? So I feel like them seeing it is just like a reminder that they can still pursue their dreams, too. Because mm -hmm. like I said, we come from, I come from the same shit. Right. Different timelines, obviously. They they was older than me. They went through it longer than me, but we still went through shit. Mm -hmm. Seen a lot of shit. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel like it's, yeah, they happy. They proud of me. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Acting, I see for sure. Now, if you could pick a show, what show would you be on? I see like so many different things. I'm like, I got a couple. Yeah, I got a couple. Like what? Tell me. Um, <laughs> because I'm silly and I'm funny too. So obviously, like I love Issa Rae. I love with Yeah, I would work with Issa. Mm -hmm. And then I love like action stuff. Like I want to do some little Marvel stuff too. Okay, like, I, I, I could see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I don't want to put myself in a box, honestly. Yeah. I just don't want. I just don't want stereotypical roles. Like that's a, that's what I'm not about to allow. Right. Unless it comes along the journey where I've already proven myself in the other spaces. Right. Because I still feel like it's needed in the the, the comedy sense. Like I don't want to lose that that sense of us being able to laugh and talk about shit that people scared to talk about now. Right. Like, cancel culture is. It's fucking nuts. It is insane. Yeah, so I'm just like, I still want to be able to have fun with the roles I do too, but I, it's just all got to make sense. Yeah. yeah. And then too, like you said, growing up, you know, your insecurities came from what you didn't see. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now that you have this platform, it's important for you to continue to be that person mm -hmm. that, you know, these young girls aren't seeing in those roles and seeing in different, you know, mm -hmm. rooms. Mm -hmm. No, nah, it's going to happen. Don't claim it. Yet. Hell yeah, manifestation. You got to start saying my agent or my whoever books you for the next Maybe. movie. I'm about to, like, wait, let me try it. Yeah, yeah. Think about, think about <laughs> No. And start with it. Because no, it always no, works out for you. No, no, no. I'm not going to do that no more. Now we got the journal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now we got the meditation. <laughs> it I got a lot of them. We got the stones and all that. I yeah, I do. I kind of fell off lately, but like, girl, if you see my house, I got so many crystals. And okay, so y'all call the stones. I done forgot about it. I was I was a maniac before. Like I had them everywhere. Like I was traveling with them everywhere. Um, um, I still I still have them, but I do need to tap tap back in. Yeah, because I don't know. I I don't know. Like I do believe that they do have healing powers, or it could be a mental thing. I don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying just because I know how powerful the mind is. So it's like if I gotta focus my energy into this motherfucker, just crystal. It's hot. <laughs> like I would bring it's, crystal with me. Like because it's coming, it's working. Right. Yeah. What about relationships? Are you dating? I'm not dating. I'm I'm dating, but I'm not. If that makes sense, like I'm not in a situation, but I'm like you know I'm open. entertaining. I'm open, yeah. Like I I'm, I'm communicating with people, but like am I kicking it, kicking it with somebody? No. Mm -hmm. Do you want that in the future? I do. Like love, marriage. I do. No, I do. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Like I feel like I'm finally walking into a space where I'm like loving myself, where mm -hmm. I can manifest the person that I'm supposed to be with, where I wasn't before. So. Now I'm just focused on working, like yeah. obviously ain't like healing and doing all my shit. So when it's right, I know that the person gonna find me. But yeah, of course I want love. Yeah, I remember being in such a space where like I'm chilling. Or that's why the power of the mind, the power of the tongue is so important. I remember for a long time, I'm chilling. Oh, whatever happens, happens. Oh, nothing too serious. Do, mm -hmm. and you know what? Nothing serious ever came from any of that. I am very serious now. Like, don't play with me. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't play with it. Don't play with it. For real. Don't play with it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm correct. Because the power of the really. tongue is so important. We only getting older. It really is. It really is important. That's why I'm like, I'm. Time I'm, is important. Time, how we spend our time is important. How we spend our time, how we speak over ourselves, how we treat ourselves, everything. All of it matters. Yeah. Like, we cannot play about 
this year. Because mm -hmm. our body is our temple. So it's like that's where I'm at with it now where I'm just like, I'm okay to chill and focus on me. Right. Until the person that's met finds me. But like two weeks ago, I was looking. I ain't gonna lie. I was being a bird. <laughs> where where <laughs> are you? It depends on what city you were. I don't remember where I was. I can't say. I can't disclose the city. It's like, <laughs> If I'm in Houston, I'm looking. Where they at? Because they be looking good over there. I gotta go out there. I wanna go there. The people in Houston in general are just very beautiful. Mm -hmm. The women, the men, everybody just look good. Yeah, so I wanna go there. Like, like, what are they? What are niggas like? Me or no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. No, I'm cap. So, like, right now I'm saying this, and then, <laughs> and then, like, next week I'm gonna be like, yeah, what are niggas? Right. And then the week after, I'm looking for my husband. Don't talk to me. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm figuring it out. Right. I'm part of the process. But no, nah, yeah, of course I want that person, but it's like, it's hard. It's different now. Yeah. You know, like it is, it's different, especially because it's so everything is so accessible. Right. You know, and, and yeah, it's accessible. Man can just go on the internet and find a bad bitch and like, right. And DM her, and then it's just that. So it's just like, I don't want to feel accessible. Yeah. Like, I want you to know me from that. You yeah. Know what I'm saying because I just know what I give. So at this point, I'm just like, I'm chilling. Yeah. And it's deeper than that these days, too. Like, I was listening to something earlier, and it's like, we focus so much on personality and looks and all these things. But what about someone's, like, lifestyle for real? Like, do we agree on certain things or how you want to live your life together religion maybe all what you would do in certain situations you know what i'm saying like those are the things we need to focus it matters on. i yeah. went away from a billionaire mm -hmm. because we didn't have the same value right like he didn't treat me wrong he didn't disrespect me he didn't cheat on me i just knew that morally we weren't the same so right like, why am i wasting my time why am i wasting his time right you gotta go right yeah. and it's like a billionaire like where another bitch would have been like you dumb right i would have got that baby i would have got them back and right i don't know baby with that man because i don't know if he's gonna be able to raise my child right right don't work out you know what i mean yeah so it's like mm -hmm. and dating someone who you know is super wealthy like you said a billionaire did you feel like because i know for me personally when my little used to be thing mm -hmm. what i realized later was like mm, i don't think that someone of that stature cared enough about what I was doing and the, the like, you know, my work ethic at the time because they would surpass that already. So like mm -hmm. to me, it was like, girl, you gonna work at midnight to do lit? Like, you know, they didn't really, cause we're on two different paths. Mm -hmm. And like, did you ever feel that way where you're like, this person doesn't really care about the stage of my career that I'm in right now enough? For sure. Not as you saying it, nothing back yet. Right. At that point, I, it was bigger fish to fry. It was more shit that was bothering me about him mm -hmm. than that. What you saying that is like, yeah, he didn't ask me about, like, oh, how was work today? How right. Was, yeah, he did. It's like they don't even give a thing. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. they think it's small. It's like very elitist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very like nurturing and sweet and like cute. And blah, 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 blah. But like, I don't care about all that. Right. I do. Like, right. obviously, I want that too, but I need you to like, it's for a different, yeah. Yeah, like the you ain't got a different, it's yeah. for like building together. I ain't asking for you to ask for a whole essay, but just show a little. Right, like yeah. do you care? Yeah, but it was bigger shit than that. Right. That, that already had time y'all to not even recognize that. Mm -hmm. Right now, <laughs> today, you may be like, <laughs> like, mm. like, damn, yeah, he wasn't that. <laughs> like, he really didn't give a fuck. Right. Yeah. But okay. sometimes you gotta, yeah, those are the things that don't matter. Like whatever you have materialistically or whatever the fuck, if you're not coming correct in other ways, then yeah, it's really, I, it, it really is that at this point, not at this, like at this age, I'm yeah. like, cause I didn't learn so much, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm trying to make it clear that I'm not the girl that's like, fuck these niggas. Right. Say shit. That's cause that's what, yeah, because that's what it's kind of been, I think that's what people think. Mm -hmm. Or it's just like, no, nah, I'm just like at a point where I'm just like, not tired, but it's just tired. Or, yeah. Where it's just like, I know what I give. So it's just like, I'm not settling. Where it's like, yeah. yeah. It's all love. It's right for you. Yeah, it's all love. But yeah. Power of the tongue. Power of the tongue. So what are we manifesting this year? What are we manifesting? Mm hmm you are queen manifester. I uh, baby. I can't wait to use these tactics. Big girl. I'm, a, I'm yeah. telling you. Chris Cross Apple to us today. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. If you put it in writing, too, yeah. 
Man, let me stop saying that. Right. <laughs> but I mean, it's really the tools is there. Everybody be saying it. Some people just don't receive it. People mm-hmm. don't be believing it because it sounds cliche. What about artist collaborations? Mm-hmm. Would you want to manifest for that? J. Cole. Oh, I love J. Cole. I love that man so much. Yeah. I love him. J. Cole, obviously, like Kendrick. Um, Are you a Wale fan? I, I was. You were? I was back in the day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's not hiding. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I haven't heard nothing of him. I'm not, not a fan, but I haven't heard nothing of him. Mm-hmm. But um, Kendrick. Who else? I love Lil Baby. Not even just because, not be necessarily because of his music, but because of the how he, his character. Right. Like, I feel like he for his people. Did you see the documentary? I did. Yeah. That was, made me really that, appreciate That was the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. Like, especially because it's like, you see him out in the room and he on his business. Like, he not like being mixy, trying to do too much. Yeah. Like, he being loud. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he quietest motherfucker in the room, but you still see and you know, I don't know, it's something like he got, um, I can see him being powerful and, mm-hmm. and doing more and moving forward. Yeah. Uh, who else? I love all the ladies. Like, all the girls be doing it. Thing. Yeah, and the girls are killing it. The girls right are now. killing it. Yeah, the girls are acting up. Yeah. Yeah. So, I can't really say specific words, but, like, they all. All of them. All, yeah, really. Yeah. And yeah, if it makes sense, it's like, yeah, all of them. I'm excited to hear more, to see more, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, see where the journey goes. Yeah. We on it, yeah, party. girl. Yes, we just getting started. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Now, before you get up out of here, what advice would you give to someone who's going through the hustle and is struggling through it? Because we struggle through every level of the hustle. Mm-hmm. Like you get through one, the next level is gonna hit you with mm-hmm. even the billion dollar level. Mm-hmm. Gonna be more mm-hmm. struggle, mm-hmm. just different levels. Never stop, right? In mm-hmm. life, I would say, don't. Just be mindful of your thoughts. Like, mm-hmm. don't allow the negative stuff to fester. Mm-hmm. Like, stay positive and find lessons in the negative. Like, if even if something mm-hmm. fucked up happened to you, like, well, damn, like, why this happened? Don't do that. Don't ask why it happened. Ask why this happened. Okay. You know what I mean? Don't be like, oh, why me? Be like, oh, why? Figure out what the lesson was behind what it was and, like, figure it out. Like, don't fit pushing. Like, right. I feel like people be giving up too soon or... Or opposed to giving up, it's just like, maybe that wasn't meant, but this could be leading to something else. I just feel like, just pay attention to the signs. Yeah. Just, like, stay positive and, like, don't listen to nobody else. Cause everybody don't, somebody along the way is going to try to project their shit on you. Mm-hmm. At some point or another, somebody going to come and be like, oh, well, what if da 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 work? Don't do, uh-uh. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Right, right, right. Yeah, don't listen to nobody and just stay positive. Claim your blessings. See your blessings before it happens. Celebrate your blessings before they happen. And then, yeah. I love it. I love it. And you owe me a story. Oh, shit. Yep. What did you do? And that's how we going to end. All right. What did you do that made you have to take a break from? Okay. So I refer. So I quit smoking weed, y'all, because. You ain't kind of strong. That gumbo getting a little strong. <laughs> so I always had the thing where I know better, where I can't smoke socially or public. Like I gotta be in my house, <laughs> door locked, it. right? For real, <laughs> uh, you know you can't be out. And I had a flight. God. And I smiled. And I was, something was like, oh, you can do it this time before the flight. Oh. And I was like, all right, girl. <laughs> so I hit it. I go to the airport and I walk in with my bags and I see this like group of like nuns hugging each other where like they hugging this one lady goodbye and I'm just like what that's weird who just drop people off at the airport that's the first thought in my head I'm like why are they dropping her off at the airport mm-hmm. like they weird bro like what the fuck is this it's New York City like right, right. who does that go past them and then because the hugs was so embracing so it reminds you of a so it's like I didn't look long enough to it's just like this is dramatic whatever I go forward go to security and then I see this lady, this this old nun, and she looked so like feeble at one point. And then she got this little carry-on bag and she picks it up and it looks so heavy. And I'm like, why that's so heavy? <laughs> so now my heart beat, I'm like, what she got in there? Why did I start thinking that she had that's a bomb inside of her, her carry-on? No. So my heart is racing. I was like, 
I was like, I gotta go back outside. I gotta stop because I was like, if it, it, it if it do go up, I need to be outside. I was like, I need to go. So I left out of the security line, girl. Went back outside. I mess remind y'all. My my heart, we know it gets worse. No, 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 no. I can't. No, no, no. It gets worse. No, 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 it gets worse. Okay. I go outside and I'm like, okay. Well, by now she bought through that bitch, so they would either call her ass or it, we would have been gone. Like that right. caught her already, if anything. So I'm like, you good? You go in. I calm myself down. I'm like, you skip it. I'm like mad at myself. And I'm like, bitch, you tripping. Like, right. what's wrong with you? We, like, you gotta stop smoking. I'm literally having this whole dialogue with myself. Yeah, judgmental. Like, how would you yeah. do that to her? Like, you don't know her. Like, I'm mad at myself. Like, having a full combo, talking to my best friend. Like, bitch, can you believe that? And I'm like, she ain't even. She ain't even in the same terminal. Probably. She. I mean, she probably going to the other airline. I go to the uh, plane, remind you, I'm going for a job. I had to shoot as soon as I landed. Uh, I fucking go. And then I see the lady. I look, I'm standing in the line. You know, I'm like, we're the first. And I'm like, looking back to see how many people, because I wanted to gauge how big the plane was. I'm looking to see. I see her ass. I said, oh, uh, uh. I said, not on my motherfucking plane. Uh, so now at this point, my shit is beating again. It gets worse. My shit is beating again. And I see this little, she had another carry on on top of her carry on that I didn't see when she went through security. So I'm like, oh, hell no. Like, she tried to get us. So I'm like, I called my agent. I was like, remind you, it's like 11 o'clock at night. It was the red eye flight. My agent pissed because she sleep. She's right. I fucking sleep right like now. I was like, uh, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm not feeling good. I can't, I mean, I can't take this flight. Right. Because I didn't tell her about the nuns, obviously. I'm sorry. If she, see, if she sees this, she's going to be mad as hell. <laughs> when I was like, 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 with someone who has a bomb. I'm no, for real. So in my head, I'm getting ready to board. And I stopped. I stood on the side. And I'm trying to figure out if I can book another flight. I'm literally calling and trying like to. You're dead serious. serious. I'm dead ass serious. <laughs> I did not take that flight. I'm standing to the side. I'm I'm literally like crying. I see the little boy. I was like, poor baby. Somebody gotta tell I'm like, somebody gotta tell the story. I'm just like, yep. And, it, and it's gonna be me. And it's gonna be my head. And I was like, and, and I literally left. I look Ebony. I want you to know that that is crazy. <laughs> Keep going. I literally that's why I was like, you can't smoke no more, bro. Something wrong with you. You know, like you gotta lay off the sauce. And I left and I was like, if you don't see nothing oh, on the news tomorrow, bitch, you ain't smoking no more. And I went to bed, woke up, I took that first flight, and I ain't see shit on the news. And I was so like, So you really did not get on that I flight. did not get on that flight, and they were pissed. I figured it out, though. I had to pay my out of my own pocket, because it was a client that played. I had to pay the extra, you know, do the changing. What excuse did you get? I wasn't feeling good. Oh. Uh, I wasn't feel. I mean, I wasn't feeling good. Did you miss the shoot? No, no, I made the shoot. I mean, because originally, if I had took that flight, I would have landed, and I had that day. Right. Now, I took the next one, so I landed and had to go straight to set. But you know what? If you got on that flight and something would have happened, baby, you live to tell the story. What y'all would have said. Right. What y'all would have said then. <laughs> baby, I would I tell you I saw that little boy that was hey, my God, I was like, God bless you. Baby. I don't want to tell him about it. I should tell him about it. <laughs> that was yeah, it was a rap after that. I was like, you gotta mm, yeah, no. Did you stop that? No, I didn't. But I I mean <laughs> Right. It made you think about it. I took a little break. I right. did take a little, little break, but then I did again. But now I'm done. Right. I told you, I, I actually like threw everything away like like three weeks ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You did. And I'm happy that you did. And I am working on it myself. <laughs> I'm working on it too. I just got to finish the pack. But, uh, girl, we always say that. I know. That's why I had to just throw mine away. Because it's like, I'm a lightweight. I be smoking that same joint for a whole week. It's like, girl, get rid of that shit. Right. Before you go ahead accusing people of having bombs in their bag. It's not okay. <laughs> it's really not okay. <laughs> you know what? Every time I do something crazy like that, I'll be like, see? That's why I can't do it no more. What you thinking? You canceled a whole flight. Wow. How long ago was that? So maybe like a year ago. Okay. Yeah, because I, I was still in New York. Yeah, maybe like a year ago. So bad. Just so bad. It's like, girl, get your shit together. Right. And it is now. It is. Yeah. I mean, we had a thing, you know. We do. I can't <laughs> do invites for me high because you think the man is about to blow that bitch up. It's yeah. Like, it was because the way she picked it up. And <laughs> she was looking all feeble. And then she picked that bitch up all heavy and strong. And like she was on a mission. It was like she did a little, like, little. <laughs> I was like, this is a whole new bitch. I was like, this is a secret aging. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on oh with y'all? Yeah, girl, no more. Yeah. No more, no more. And you're here today to tell the story on Unpack That. Yes, Unpack That. Ebony, thank you so much thank for being you. here. We got to do this again. Yes. Especially when you're ready for the tour, girl. Yes, yes. Talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Manifestation. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
You're in the right place. It's Unpack That with me and Belle.